So this is me. And no, I am not a dog. A few years back, everyone would look at me like I was crazy when adventuring outside. But a lot has changed. Most people now are used to it, thanks to famous cat fluencers like One Bike One World, Travis and Sigrid, Professor Pouncey, and now also me. As we're getting a lot of questions about how I was trained, here is 10 tips that I learned the hard way, so you don't have to make the same mistakes as I did. These tips will help you make lifetime memories with your cat. Every cat has its own character. This is the most important fact to always keep in mind. Not every cat is the same. Cats have their own preferences and things it doesn't like. If you start training your cat on a young age, it will definitely help, as most kittens still have the explorative mindset. New things may be scary at first, but young cats can get used to new situations pretty quick, especially when you gradually make things more intense for the cat. In most of the tips, gradually letting the cat getting used to new things or experiences plays a big role. For instance, when backpack training Roz, we made sure that he was comfortable in the backpack before having any adventures with it. You should always introduce new things with small steps and always listen to your cat carefully. Something to keep in mind is that cats are both predator and prey. So that's why they are so much more alert compared to dogs. With a dog, you can just walk and not pay too much attention to your dog. But with a cat, you'll always need to be their second pair of eyes and ears. As danger can always jump around the corner, like the Rottweiler dog that attacked Roz once. But later more about that. Harness training. As every cat has its own character, there are also different kind of body proportions. You really can't say beforehand if your cat will like a specific harness or not. It's a matter of testing and letting the cat get used to it. We started with me wearing my harness at home. In the beginning, I would just lay there whenever we put my harness on. But then they lured me around with treats and I got used to my harness up to the point where I forgot I was even wearing it. The harness shouldn't be too tight as it also shouldn't be too loose. A cat should always be able to escape from his harness, I think, in case of an accident, for example. A harness does not mean you will never lose your cat, as cats can get pretty inventive with escaping their harness. Make sure there is around two fingers of space left between your cat and its harness. Still scared of losing your cat? Then the next two tips are for you. Don't let your cat escape. It might be tempting to stick the leash to a tree and just sit there and relax for a second. But beware, your cat will see this as an opportunity. I never manage to escape my harness while there is no pressure on the leash. But when a leash is pulled tight, I can easily escape, haha. <laughs> but humans don't really like this. Want to travel with your cat without having to keep your eyes on it 24-7? Get your cat a tracker. I see a lot of people using air tags for their pets. And as this may seem like a good solution, I have heard many stories of people losing their cat and the AirTag not doing its job. The tracking ability of an AirTag depends on the amount of Apple devices that are nearby. Did you know that Apple recommends not to use AirTags on pets for several reasons? Personally, we've been using the Mini Tracker by Tractiv for a while now, and it's amazing. It comes with its own app in which you can always track your cat as it works with GPS. The app also gives a lot of other features. It's like your cat wearing a Fitbit, as it gives insights about your cat's health and activity. You can also train your cat to come back home while remotely playing the sound on the tracker. Tractive has great sales sometimes, and you can save 30% on the tracker itself by using my code adventurecat underscore ross30. Check the description for the link. Pick the right spots to hike. Sometimes we went to a spot and I just wasn't in a mood to walk. I'd just sit still and was very distracted. Cats don't really like big open places, but they prefer spots that are hidden, like under the trees or somewhere with some kind of cover. If there is no visible trail, the cat will probably be overwhelmed and stay inactive. Cats like it when it is very clear where they should walk. So areas with a lot of trees 
and a clear path are my favorites. Upgrade your treats. During our first adventures, treats were the most crucial part. But especially during my early adventures, I would be so distracted by everything around me that I wouldn't even notice the smell of my normal treats. Luckily, my humans bought me some special treats for our adventures only, which I really, really liked. When I grew older, I would also smell my normal treats again, but only when I was not distracted. Reward, reward, and reward. Positive reinforcement is the best way to teach your cat. A lot of times we would be out all day, and my reward was dinner outside. I agree that this is one of the most important elements of adventuring. Running around all day definitely costs a lot of energy, so eating good is crucial. But saving the most delicious treats, or even a whole meal for when adventure time is over, really is the best way to reward a cat, as well as some grooming and time to chill afterwards. Always be aware of loose dogs, as we would like to believe that all dogs are well trained and won't charge you when they aren't leashed. The reality tells us a different story. One time I was chilling at the river and a Rottweiler dog came chasing me out of nothing. I saw no other escape than to jump in the water and what followed was a fight between a big Rottweiler and a small cat. I was only six months old at the time. I managed to scratch the nose of the Rottweiler a few times, fortunately without getting hurt. The Rottweiler backed off to the owner and however we were all shocked. The only thing we were left with was some very wet cat and a real big hate for dogs. Sadly, this wasn't the only time Ross had an encounter with an unleashed, untrained dog. So always be on the lookout for dogs, wherever you are. Try to be strategic about your breaks. All cats have certain needs. For instance, to drink. Cats love rainwater or water from natural sources, so it's a good idea to have your breaks near a water source. Also, sandy spots always score good as this is like a giant private litter box. Sometimes when you're adventuring, you don't have a choice. For instance, when you're having a flat tire. In these situations, it's best to just leave the cat in his basket, put it in the shade and maybe give some treats. The basket is a safe spot for your cat, so it's okay to let him chill in there for a bit sometimes. Remember that cats are cats. You've got yourself a cat, not a dog. As much as you'd like to raise your cat like a dog, your cat will always stay a cat. It sounds very logical, but you really shouldn't put pressure on your cat in any way to let it do something that it doesn't want. There will be moments when your cat acts like a dog and walks with you. But most of the times, the reality is that you walk with your cat and not the other way around. Let your cat explore, set the pace, decide where to go and roam around at their own will. I think it's a big reason why we really love cats. They will always have a mind of their own.